Theo, when are you going to grow up? I don't know, mate. You've been dressed as a banana for 48 hours. He was dressed as a banana. Dad, let's move on. We're going to go through every Premier League club and pick one player to watch in 2022. Because it's all about that, let's have 10,000 likes. Let's try and get it again. Absolutely. Again. Smashed it last time. You lot are amazing. Oh, we love your support at the moment. Please keep subscribing. Like we said, we're trying to grow 1,000 subscribers a day in the whole of 2022. Let's start with Arsenal. Who you gone with, Dad? Mate, first of all, I love your ambition. Arsenal, Gabriel Martinelli. It has to be. He is is a complete live wire. Four goals, two assists already. And I tell you what, I'd hate to be a defender against him, Theo. It's funny, with Arsenal, we could probably pick every single player because it's one of the youngest squads in the Premier League. Everyone's exceeding their potential under Arteta. So I've gone with someone slightly different. I've gone with Lakonga. Sambi Lakonga hasn't been in that holding mid role because Party and Jacker have been smashing it together. But I think in 2022, I want to see him have a chance. All these other boys have smashed it, breaking through into the first team. Martinelli, Saka, Smithrow. Now it's Sambi's turn. Now Party's going to the AFCON. There's a little spot next to Xhaka available for someone. And I think when he gets his chance, he's going to smash it. So all the best to him and for Arsenal. But he's the one to impress in 2022. Aston Villa and it's got to be Jacob Ramsey. Ooh. Theo, he's getting more and more game time. He's growing in confidence. What a talent he is. I've been so impressed by him and also Carney Chukameka. Yeah. I was at the Villa Manchester City game where he played one of his first matches under Gerrard on the whole Jack Grealish return. But that game had a different story. Carney nearly scored the equaliser to make it 2-2. The run he made when he came off the bench, when I watched him live, I generally thought he makes a massive difference on the game. When he starts to break through the team, I think he's going to exceed his potential under Steven Gerrard. Aston Villa are going to see many new exciting talents break through and he's going to be one in 2022. That's a big shout. Now, I saw you on Sky Sports, Theo, and you tipped Aston Villa as the team to watch this Exactly, year. because they're going to be exciting for players like the ones we've mentioned. So Villa, it's going to be a fun one for you. Now Brentford, I'm getting the word Shandon Baptiste Theo. Okay. Now this season, Brentford fans are raving about him. He's a central midfielder. Good player, Theo. Getting more and more game time. Yeah, he has. I've noticed him in the midfield when he comes on. He's exciting and, and so young. And another player who's starting to break through to the first team, who I think is going to have a massive 2022, is Mads Roeslev. Now yeah. he played that right wing back role against Villa at home. I watched that match and I thought he was so good. Showed loads of energy down the wing back role. I think he got a goal and assist. Two contributions. I know. It makes me wonder if he plays every game this calendar year, how much can he improve in the Premier League under Brentford? I'm excited. I tell you what, get him in your FPL team. Maybe. Brighton and Hove Albion. I've gone for one of my favourite players and one of yours, Theo, Tarek Lamptey. Now he's Ooh. been injured recently, hasn't yeah. he? He's come back. He's another live wire, isn't he? Up that left side. He's going to create more goals, more assists coming up. Dad, when he first broke through and he had this, this knack of pace from the Chelsea Academy. I actually watched him in his first game for the Premier League. Chelsea against Arsenal came off the bench for Frank Lampard. He saw a talent in him. The Brighton scouts, they got onto him because they knew the Reese James was going to break through to that position. And what a piece of business it was from Brighton. That guy is going to have a massive 2022. The player I've gone for, for the Seagulls, someone a little bit different. Alexis McAllister. Yeah. The man with a Scottish name, but he's from Argentina. Brilliant. And he went on loan to Boca Juniors and really upped his game there. I've just seen him recently against Brentford, Chelsea, Everton. The man's got a killer finish. He's got this, he drops into positions where there's empty gaps, takes a quick snapshot and wins Brighton matches at the moment. I think he'll start to be a regular under Graham Potter in 2022 and just go from step to step and keep improving. He's improved from the best. He's played two games in the Argentina national team, been around Leo Messi. That's all I'm going to say. Brighton have been impressive to watch yeah. recently for a neutral. I mean, Cucurella, we could have chosen him. You could have chosen Brighton for the team to watch. Yes. I mean, everyone one's going to improve. Cucurella, he's getting way more contributions in 22. He's going to be, he's going to be class. Burnley now, and I've gone for an Ivory Coast international called Maxwell Corne, yeah. Theo. He's been injured a lot, but he's already got six goals. But I'm going to go further. I reckon this lad is transformational. I reckon he can keep them up this season. And based upon that, I think Burnley can go out and buy some more exciting players. Look, we've seen them lose to Leeds 3-1, Manchester United 3-1. You start to question some of the players like Tarkowski, but you really think Maxwell Corne can save their season? Because when he first came to the club, a lot of people were surprised and wondered, would he fit in? And his answer is, yes, I do. I've gone for Nathan Collins, a 20-year-old yeah. who's come in from Stoke City, could play right back and centre-back. We've seen him more in that centre-half position with Tarkowski, which was really developing. Started to gain a connection with him. 
Played with Ben Mee at centre-back one game. He seems to understand the Burnley setup, and that's the best thing. And with him being so young, he's only going to get better in the Premier League. If they survive, he's going to become a Premier League regular in that Burnley side. So I think he's got a big 2022. And now Chelsea. I'm going to get roasted for this. I'm going to say Romelu Lukaku, Theo. Oh, God. Because you know what? He's got his mistakes out of the way, all right? He's got his fine. He's had his punishment. Now he starts scoring goals because, Theo, he's an absolutely superb footballer. Dad, you're going to cause carnage in the <laughs> comment section. You've gone for Lukaku for most improved in 2022. For the player to watch, he's going to explode. He's only got five goals so far this season. Next year, he's going to get tons of goals. I've gone for someone a little bit different. You may have not even heard of him. And a lot of Chelsea fans, I'm name dropping someone to watch out for in 2022 because I think he's going to have a big year. Lewis Hall, Ooh. the 17 year old, all right, three years yeah. younger than me, which is unbelievable. That's how young he's already breaking into the first team. He was on the bench against Liverpool, him and uh, I think Harvey Vale. The reason I'm saying watch out for Lewis Hall, I've watched his games in the academy. He can drive with the ball, very exciting. He's an absolute creator, he's got bags of assists. He's already playing in the under 23s Chelsea team and around the Chelsea first team at 17. That's all I'm saying. The guy's a talent. He's going to have a big 2022. He's going to get his Chelsea debut, show what people can do. Watch out for the name. Does he have a brilliant brand? Brother as well. He does. Big up Connor Hall. Ex Bolton. I think he's at Chorley now. He's smashing it. So. Crystal Palace. And it's got to be Michael Alisse. And if Ooh, you saw yeah. that game against West Ham, when he came on as a sub, he was sensational. He changed the game. Now he's got five contributions this season. The thing is, Theo, Jordan Ayu, Wilfred Zahar are off to AFCON. Get Elise starting. And you need Eberichi Eze in yeah, the team as well. Yeah. He's the one to watch for me in 2022. I watched him at QPR. It's very local to me. So when I did get down, when my mate Dylan invited me, mate, the geezer glides with the ball. What, Dylan? Unlike any other... Well, Dylan's a very good footballer. <laughs> yes, but yes. Eze glides with the ball on the pitch. I'm telling you, that guy's a joke. And I'm looking forward to seeing him get more regular game time. I know Vieira's been resting him a little bit, holding him back from the first team because of AFCON and the players that are going to miss, like Ayu and Zaha. So it's a great opportunity for my man Eze and the one you picked, Elise, to absolutely smash it. So good luck. Everton now, and I'm going for Nathan Patterson. And Ooh. some people, if you're not watching the news, you're saying, who's he? 13 million from Rangers. And I tell you what, if you're Scottish, you know this lad. He's a right back. He's a real young talent. Yeah, you and me keep up with the SPFL on a regular. And Nathan Patterson has broken into the first team. We've watched him live. We've been up to the Ibrox and we've seen him play. He is solid. He is proper. He knows how to get out the pitch, get contributions. Under Gerard, he learns a lot. I think under Rafa, he's just going to keep exceeding his ability and he'll be a Premier League regular and smashing it soon. Toffees Cut. fans, be excited. That's yeah. what I'm going to say. Anthony Gordon's my pick though. Yeah, good shout there. The only player that really cared and wanted to get the ball, drive and make things happen. I think he had five shots. He attempted five or six crosses, dribbled past players. Dad, DCL was a little bit worried about his injury. Damari Gray did nothing. Yeah. Anthony Gordon was the only man in that team that wanted to hit him and attack and make things happen. And boy, did he do that. And hopefully that will be a good confidence booster for him to step up and continue to improve and improve under the Toffees. I think Rafa's doing a good thing here. Bringing in youth, yeah. players that are starting to develop, it's something for the future. Leeds United, it has to be Joe Gelthard. I tell you, he's a 19-year-old. He's a scouser. He was nicked from Wigan and I'm pleased about that. <laughs> yes. And he's already got a few contributions. Honestly, lightning fast. He's winning penalties. He's exciting. What a player. Even back at Wigan days and now now, as he's exceeding through at Leeds, God, uh, he's such a good dribbler. He gets the ball. He could beat a man. I think he's won two penalties for Leeds this season. No surprises there. He's got the flair, dribbling and pace. He just needs to add that clinical side to his game and get in that Leeds team more on the regular. But look, under a manager like Marcelo Bielsa, he's going to go from step to step. I agree with you on Joe Geldhart. Leicester City and it's James Madison for me Theo now he's got his dry spell out of the way and in recent weeks I think he's got about eight contributions and what he wants is to go to Qatar with England oh. I think he's good enough dad that's the aim and look it seems to be very positive in that Leicester team at the moment. They've jumped away from that bad stretch of form and now things are doing well. The player I've gone for, another one that started to really perform in December and I think he's got a massive 2022 Kin and Dewsbury Hall Ooh, yeah. midfielder. His chemistry with players like Madison and Tielemans and the others 
and Lookman, as we know, against Liverpool, where he set him up to win 1-0. And I think it's moments like that where he started to really show that he can be the mould of that Leicester City midfield. He's only going to keep improving. I think 2022 is big for him. So watch out. Great at driving with the ball. We had good spells at Luton and Blackpool. And when they're built in the EFL, they always turn out top talent, similar to Eze as well. So yeah. let's see what happens. But I want to see him score a goal because I want to know what his goal celebration's like. Maybe it's something that we told him to do. That's all I'm going to say. Liverpool now. And I've gone with an 18-year-old player called Harvey Elliott Theo. And although he's only a teenager, he plays with real maturity. Yep. I mean, his season was stopped by injury. But I tell you what, this is a versatile lad. He can play right midfield. He can play left wing, right wing, attacking midfield. He's going to be a spectacular player. Dad, we agree again. Klopp played him in that midfield role and he was one of their best players before he had that big injury. One of the most unlucky injuries to yeah. have. Just as he's hitting his prime, similar to Jay Rodriguez years ago. When, do you remember when he was about to get in that yes, England squad? Yes, I do, yeah. It's similar like that. I know it's on different clubs and different sort of situations, but I really felt for the players. And Harvey Elliott, is going to come back for it. I don't know when he's back, but AFCON means Mane and Salah is out. There's a position there. If he can get back in time, I'm unsure if that's the case. But we know in 2022, he will be more around that first team, if not as first team regular. And I agree with you. He's going to smash it. So Harvey, get out there and absolutely smash it, mate. Manchester City. I'm going to go boring here, Theo, and <laughs> say Jack Grealish. Aww. Now, only two goals and two assists so far. But let's not forget how good he is. And what I want to see him do is run more at players. Mm. Play like he used to at Villa. He's a great player. And I want to see this in 2022. I think you're being a bit of a mug here, Dad. Jack <laughs> Grealish has already proven. We know he's one to watch, but you've got to go younger. City have so many academy graduates that we should be looking out for in 2022. And one of them is Cole Palmer. Like we've seen him come off the bench, great with the ball at his feet, can create and make things happen. And Pep Guardiola, like he did for Phil Foden, I think he's going to follow a similar path, start to break into the first team and play a massive role in 2022. I want to see it happen. I mean, he's already got a goal in Europe, hasn't he? He does. And when he gets in the Premier League first team, he's had some great games. Remember Everton came off the bench. Yeah. He's shown them what he can do. I think City fans are seriously impressed and I want to see him play 90 minutes soon. Manchester United, you might accuse me of being boring again, but Jadon Sancho, Theo. I looked at his stats last season in the Bundesliga, 20 contracts contributions the season before 34 contributions yeah we saw him play in Germany and Bundesliga is a bit of a weaker league but at some point he's gonna start banging mark my words look at the stats in the Bundesliga right it's got to happen eventually yes. and another man that I've seen previously play really well in a United shirt actually that's what makes it different to Jaden he's not done it since Cristiano Ronaldo signed you know who I've spoken about Mason Greenwood yeah. is the player I want to see improve in 2022 not just for England but I think Ralph Rangnick I just hope he works it out what is the code to success with Mason Greenwood. We know his ceiling is so high. So how do you get the player from where he is now to reach that potential that at one stage, I thought Ole was getting when he was getting a goal a game at the beginning of the season. Whether Cristiano Ronaldo is the answer, I'm not too sure, but I want to see Mason Greenwood exceed because that's the man for the future. So let's see if he can continue to develop and get him back to where he was before. And by the way, I nearly said Phil Jones because in that last yes. game, he was magnificent. A look, he could replace Harry Maguire. Imagine Phil Jones and Varane. That was Sir Alex's dreams about 12, 13 years ago. That was what he wanted and he might actually get it from a crazy different perspective, but there we go. New Newcastle United and every Geordie is shouting this name from the rooftops Joe Linton Ooh, Theo really? used to be a centre forward he's been reinvented as a central midfielder and he's been magnificent the effort he puts in is truly outstanding I agree but I don't agree as in I, I think he'll have a great 2022 but there's one man who's going to have an even bigger one and it's the one to watch and it's the new signing Kieran Trippier yeah. it's obvious guys he's signed for Newcastle United and all these people on Twitter and on the other social media are saying oh but he's not that that good that is a load of rubbish absolutely did wonders for England every time he steps up for England in a big competition the Euros previously the World Cup and let's not forget he was in La Liga team of the season there was not a right back out there in that league that outperformed him he's hacked it in the Prem and La Liga now he's going to come back to Newcastle the first big signing of many and absolutely smash it I think the Geordies should be very excited he's the one to watch in 2022 Norwich City now I've gone for Milo Rashica Theo a Ooh, Kosovan okay. international came from Werder Bremen 10 million quid it's taken him a while to get used to the pace of the Premier League but apparently he's getting better in recent weeks. Fair play. I've gone for Matthias Norman. Now, he's a player that come from Norway and he actually was in Ro Russia, I think Rostov to be exact. And, yeah. You know, played quite well. He's on loan from Rostov, so he will go back there in the summer. 
But this is on the plan that he plays well when he comes back from his injury for the Canaries and they re-sign him. Because I think he's got a massive 2022, wherever he is for that second part of the season. And I think one of Norwich's best. And when he got injured, you could see their form drop mm. off. I think he will smash it under Dean Smith when he gets back to full fitness. And he's a player with a bit of flair, a bit of talent. When they beat Brentford, he played a massive role. They will get more wins. If they've got a chance of surviving, they need him in that team. Southampton now under new ownership now, yeah. aren't they, Theo? The Serbian fella. Yeah, and we'll talk about that late. That is brilliant, isn't they it? They got the Saints. The Serbian lads are taking over. It's a new era for them. I wish them all the best. Absolutely. But it's got to be James Ward-Prowse, who I think has okay. been magnificent in recent weeks. And he leads by example, Theo. But do you not think he's already the one to watch? I just like talking about him because I'm a big fan. You're a big fan, yeah. Theo. He needs to get back into that England setup for his set pieces alone. So I'm going to go for Valentino Livramento. Yes. Now, look, he's come from the Chelsea Academy and absolutely smashed it. And people at the start of the season didn't know how good he was because he hadn't played for Chelsea didn't get time in the first team. We didn't know if he'd be able to cope in the Premier League. Ralph Hazenhuttle believed in him and he's absolutely smashed it. And his roof is so high. I think he's going to go from strength to strength. His 22 is going to be massive. And I want to see him just continue to bring contributions and defend and run that right back role in a Saints shirt. Tottenham Hotspur. And Theo, we've talked too much about attacking players. So yeah. I want to go to defensive midfield, Okay, Oliver Skip. And there's mm. a Norwich link here because last year he was on loan at Norwich and he really kicked in there. And I think he's a really Really good solid player, good positional sense, good passing, good tackler. I like him a lot there. Cool. I was going to go for Oliver Skip. He was very recommended. But I've gone for a player that's caught my eye since Antonio Conte has taken over. And he has improved a lot. And that's Davinson Sanchez. Yes. Now he plays in a three-back system with Ben Davis and Eric Dyer. But what he brings to the table is not only good defensive abilities, but in that back three, he has an ability to drive forward yeah. and actually create. He played that ball through. I think it was, it was Son or Kane. I forget which one against Palace, but he got an assist. Davinson Sanchez is adding a lot more attacking threat from centre-back in the back three. And that's exactly what Conte wanted out of it. He's gone from strength to strength. He's going to be big in 2022. Watford, and for me, Theo, it's got to be Joshua King, who already okay. this season has got eight contributions. Of course, Emmanuel Dennis is getting all the headlines, but he's off to AFCON, isn't he? I've gone for the new signing. A bit of a gamble. Hassan Kamara, the Ooh. left back. They've only recently signed him, and clearly they've had enough of uh, Messina and Danny <laughs> Rose. But I think he's going to do a great job in that left back role. The guy was playing in the French League, did well at Nice, but when I went to the Stade Ron Stadium, you know, I went to Stade Ron yes, recently yes. in that French trip. We were looking back at past players and one of the French staff mentioned that Kamara has done really well for yes. them. So he's done it well in Ligue 1. Now I want to see it do well in the Premier League. He's got versatility, can play left wing back, left mid and left back. So when they need to change formation in game or they need something different from him, he's available for that. He's got lots of power and pace on that left flank. They could be big for Watford. I tell you what, Theo, this relegation fight is going to be a ding-dong-do, isn't it? It will. And with Watford basically investing in their defence, which is exactly what they needed to do, they probably still need a centre-back too. So let's see if they could do that. But they're going to put in a fight for survival. West Ham United and Theo, I've gone for my FPL captain this game week, Jared Bowen, who I think Ooh. has been absolutely magnificent. This is his breakthrough season in this league, isn't it? 12 contributions already and he's going to get better but is he already the one to watch that's the thing like he's one of he many now him. Ben Rama is off to AFCON isn't he Theo okay. Mikhail Antonio has been brilliant as well I've gone for Nikola Vlasic now the yes. guy's come from Russia done really well there <laughs> and when he's played he's shown good abilities like you see him covering for Ben Rama, who's going to AFCON. I think he's going to smash that role whilst he's away under David Moyes. Like, we've seen ability already. We're going to score a great goal in a Hammers shirt. I think he's going to kick on in 2022. And when need be, and he gets in that first team, he's going to do well. And so finally, Wolverhampton Wanderers. I've gone for the forgotten man because he's been injured, Theo. Pedro Neto. And I remember okay. him from last season. And what this guy provides, Theo, is pace and skill and finishing. And what Wolves need is more contributions. Absolutely. We've been mentioning how, how good Pedro Neto was last season his link up play with Raul Jimenez people had one of the two in the FPL yes, teams and yes. when he gets back not only will he improve himself but the team around him so I'm excited for that but the player I'm picking up on I've already mentioned him on Sky Sports and I've got to keep repping him <laughs> Maximilian Kilman. I don't know if that's his first it's probably Max Kilman. either way look he's a great player great with the bullet feet previously a futsal England player that's why he's so good with the ball at his feet as a centre-back. little fact for you. Was it Darlington on loan in the build-up? Look, another low league club that he learned a lot from. But him, Saiz and Cody run that back three. Them three smash it. That's why they're one of the best offensive teams. I think second or third in the Premier League. No surprises there. They just beat United away and he smashed it against Cristiano Ronaldo. Max Kilman for England this year. 2022, it's coming. Theo, I reckon you're on commission from him. I think, you know, a crate of grey hey. goose or something. But I tell you what, that, that <laughs> back three... He doesn't want that. <laughs> no, no, that back three at Wolves... 
special. Maybe one of those for your FPL. What I want to see mm. is Neto, Podence, Trincao, Jimenez score more goals because Wolves are looking really good right yeah, now. Yeah, if they score more, European place, it's on. That's it complete. Every Premier League club, one player to watch. I want 10,000 likes, but I also want you guys to get down the comments. Call Thog Dad a mug for picking some of the players he put and basically tell him what he got wrong. I, I may have had some stinkers as well, but I, look... Let's see what happens. Theo, go off and put your banana suit back I will. on. Actually, I will. Thank right, that is a massive improvement, Whee! Theo. <laughs>